everything we want in life boils down to one thing. We think it's going to make us happy. But you know, sometimes we won't even allow ourselves to be happy no matter what. Today, we're going to talk about those reasons in this part one of two series. Let's go get that nugget. Welcome, ladies, to the Life Mastery for Women podcast. I'm Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind, your host. This is where we go to learn to master our life one nugget at a time. Hey guys, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you allowing yourself to be happy. If you're not allowing yourself to be happy, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. So it wasn't uh, a couple of weeks ago, I've been doing a lot of coaching this year during the, during the winter months of really going inward and meditating and really building my practice and really pushing myself with my coach and working on uncovering and releasing some of these negative beliefs and, and thought patterns and to really elevate this year. That's my goal. And the last couple of weeks, I've noticed something that I have a hard time allowing myself to do things that bring me joy simply for the sake that they bring me joy. I find that I make a lot of excuses about why I can't do that thing, even though I really want to do it, and I just let it pass. And then days and months and probably years go by, and I look at that thing, and man, I haven't done that in a really long time, and I really enjoy that thing. So I wanted to talk about, there's a few reasons And I want to talk about those reasons, but you know, as you're thinking about it and as you're listening to this episode is I want you to think if there's reasons for you why you don't allow yourself to be happy. So here's my top five. And even as as we go through this, there'll probably be even more as I think about it, but um, this is going to be a part one. So today we're going to talk about why we don't allow ourselves to be happy. And then on the next episode, part two, it's going to have a little bit of a different name, but it's going to be called Open the Floodgates to Happiness, part two. So those two will go together and they'll be right next to each other on the list. So you'll easily be able to find them. And then we're going to talk about how you combat each of these five reasons that I'm going to talk about today. So the very first one is fear of the outcome. If I allow myself to do things that make me happy, what's going to happen? So fear of the outcome. Fear is a really debilitating emotion. I'm finding, I I remember uh, when I first started my book collection, and I didn't even mean to start a book collection, I just found that I uh, got a lot of knowledge and education through books, and it was really interesting um, what I got from reading, and I just became addicted to buying books. And my whole library is all (laughs) categorized by topic. And I started with a lot of fear-based books, not fear-based like horror books, but just books that dealt with fear, like Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. That's a really, really good book. There's another one to overcome fear and actually doesn't have fear in the title, but it definitely helps is 101 Ways to Motivate Yourself. And there's, there's, and then it just kind of like, think of it as like a little seed that then sprouted these root systems. And that's kind of how my book Uh, collecting (laughs) and addiction uh, was born. And it led me to another book, led me to another book. And even if that book I was reading was really good and that book recommended other books, I would go get those books too. And if I really liked the author, I would go buy all of their books. That's kind of how it started. But when we talk about fear, here's the thing that I've noticed. It is very debilitating, but it's also a life sustaining emotion. Like, you know, think of thousands of years ago, you're living in a cave with your family, with your community, your village, whatever. And and you decide you don't want to be with them anymore. You don't want to be with your family. You want to go start a family on your own. You want to live across on the other side of the mountain. And you decide to go in the middle of the night because you had a big fight and you leave with your knapsack and your apple and you walk across the desert in the middle of the night. Now, Your subconscious mind is not going to allow you to do that. You're going to hear noises, you're going to see things, you're going to see shadows, and you're going to get scared. And that fear is what's going to save your life. So you don't get eaten by a Siberian tiger who who hunts at night and hunts for people who run away from their families that are in the desert. (laughs) So that fear keeps us safe. Fear of loud noises, fear of falling, fear of unusual things, fear of of the unknown. And so as this brings me back around to this first reason is the fear of the outcome. If I quit my job and become an entrepreneur, what am I going to do? 
What if I hate working over here, but I would really love to do this thing over here? As an entrepreneur, make my own money, set my own hours, do my own stuff, make, I, I just would like, I love, I would really enjoy doing that. It brings me a lot of joy. But there's fear. What would happen if I did that? Where would my income go? What would happen to me? And if I took all this time off, would the workforce even hire me back? You know, if I've been gone for a year or two or three and I decided I can't hack it as an entrepreneur, now what? Right? So the fear of the outcome. Is that you? Is that something in you where fear of leaving the familiarity that creates this debilitating fear that you just won't leave. You won't leave the job. You won't leave the abusive relationship. You won't move to a new city. You won't decide to have kids. Like all of the fear of the fear of the outcome. How will I handle it? What will I do? We're going to talk about how we combat that in the next episode, part two, open the floodgates to happiness. Number two, this is a big one. And this is a big one for a lot of people. And this is something that I've been aware of my whole life and have always gone against the the grain. And that is social norms. So my family goes like this and goes in this direction. And this family goes in this direction, right? And all the social, cultural norms, this is how we act. We learn it, it starts in our family, how we, it loads our beliefs about money and relationships and food and our bodies and our own self-esteem and how we, how we spend our time, what we do, the things we go and do, the activities we take, we, we partake in. All of those things are brought to us. We don't go looking for them. They're in our household. Then we, we go into school and it broadens. You know, now we're, we're learning what other kids do in their households and what they wear and how they believe about certain things. And, and it, then it expands as we, we get bigger in our perspective and our, our peripheral vision, if you will, begins to expand. We now start to look at other cultures and we're like, wait a second, you know, I want to do that or I want to, I want to be, I feel different inside or um, I, I want to do things differently because that looks more fun or I, you know, my beliefs are different than what my family's or my culture is. That is another reason why we won't allow ourselves to be happy. So, you know, me growing up as a gay young woman in a very Catholic community, you can imagine, well, maybe you can imagine that I was very lonely as a, as a young kid. I knew, especially as I got older and we're, you know, rolling around to, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, that I'm thinking, you know, oh, there is something really different about me. And I didn't even know what the word meant. You know, back then, this was this would have been like 85, 86. I didn't even know what that meant. I just knew that I was different. And I also knew that I shouldn't talk about it. So that fear that keeping me in the social norm where people are, you know, my friends are going to dances with boys. And I'm like, I don't want to go to a dance with a boy, but I'd ask her to go, you know, and, but you just know that you just knew that that wasn't right, quote, unquote, right? And I didn't talk about it with anybody. And it was really hard. It was really challenging. And it became more and more challenging as I got older because now they're like, hey, are you going to prom? And hey, are you going to this dance? Or where, who's your boyfriend? And then, you know, my family is asking like, so are you dating anybody? You know, stuff like that. And it became harder and harder to try to hide that instead of facing it. We're also going to talk about how you combat that in part two. All right. Number three, guilt or shame. Guilt of doing things that make you happy. Guilt of why would I do that thing to bring me joy when I don't have this thing in my life all figured out. You know, I find a lot of people who are struggling with money will not allow themselves to enjoy even the free activities that you could go do because they're so pressured to make money, to bring money in the house, to contribute to their family, whatever, go find a job that and they try, but they won't allow themselves to raise that vibration and and overcome the guilt or the shame around that thing and going out to do something happy is going to raise their vibration. So that's a little bit of a hint at what we're going to talk about next um, in the next episode, part two. But guilt and shame can definitely prevent somebody from enjoying their life and doing things that will bring them joy because they don't, they have that weight and guilt and shame are very dark, very very heavy emotions. They won't allow themselves to kind of get in the flow because it makes them feel guilty. And not everything takes money, right? There's lots and lots of things you can do to, to create joy and happiness in your life that are free. Matter of fact, I recommend it because then there is no pressure at all and you can do it every single day, no matter what. 
The next, number four, is having a low self-esteem. I find that people who don't think highly of themselves, they don't have self-confidence, they don't have a high self-esteem, they don't, they don't think they're worthy, they don't feel deserving. In those ways that says, you know, I'm here on this planet, yep, I have these circumstances, yep, I'm in this situation, but I can still do things that make me happy, that they just won't allow themselves to, to move into that space because sometimes I think it is such a it is such an opposite feeling that I'm so low I don't deserve to even smile and the gap is too great between having a low self-esteem and having happiness. Low self-esteem and no confidence and and not feeling worthy are very low moving, low and slow moving energies. Happiness is very high and uh, very fast moving energy, there's a big gap. So there's a way to kind of move up a little bit at a time to create space for happiness to come in. The last one, this is probably the one I feel the most connected to, and see if this is right for you too, is I'm too busy trying to control everything. I'm too busy trying to control everything else over here in this category that I can't take the time I can't dedicate, I can't take the energy to go do something over here simply for the fact that it brings me joy. But yet, think about this. Isn't that what we're out to do? If I can put a thousand people in front of me and ask a thousand people separately, what do you want in your life right now? If I could snap my fingers or wave a magic wand or give you whatever it is you want, what is it that you want? And here's the thing, and I want you to write this down 999 of them are going to give me something that they desire simply because they think it's going to make them happy. A new car, a bigger house, a better relationship, quieter kids, better education, more money, live in a better location. They're all going to give me something simply because they think it's going to make them happy. If they had that thing, better health, all of that. I'm going to hear all of that 999 times. And I bet one person who feels whole, who feels worthy and deserving is going to say nothing because I'm already happy. One person is going out of the 909, out of the thousand people, one person is going to say nothing. I'm going to say, what do you want? I can give you anything. What's going to, what's going to make you happy? What do you want? And they're going to say nothing because I already am. Wouldn't that be an amazing place to get to? And how do we get to it? How do we create that? How do we, how do we conjure up the emotional state of happiness simply because it's an emotional state of happiness and simply because we want to feel that way. I read a book uh, just, I don't know, it was a couple of weeks ago. And I thought this was really interesting that he says, he says, uh, everybody write, you know, 20 things down that you want right now that would make you happy for whatever reason, to write 20 desires down. I want better health, more money, a uh, better relationship. I want to move. I want whatever, all these things, more money, whatever, whatever, all the things are 20 things. And then he says, okay, I want you to turn the page on those things. And I want you to come over here and I'm going to walk you through this meditation. And I want you to do this meditation. I want you simply to feel the emotional state of being happy. So we're going to walk through this guided meditation. I'm going to take you through this visual and we're just going to conjure up the state of happiness. So get to, now we're raising their vibration, right? So now an hour later, we're raising their vibration. And then he says, on this new sheet of paper, I want you to write down 20 things that you desire. I want you to write down 20 things that you want that would make you happy. And that same group of people who just easily wrote down 20 things now has a hard time writing anything down or the list changes and they write things like quality time with my family, more time to travel, more time spending with, you know, things that I enjoy, more doing more things that I love. So he's like 20 things over here were easily written down whenever those people just walked in. When I raised their vibration and I got them to conjure up the feeling of happiness all by themselves, just in their own head, sitting in the same room and make a new list, they wrote very, they either had a hard time making the list or they only wrote a couple of things. I found that to be really, really interesting, like really interesting. I want you to try that. First, what I want you to do is I want you to write your desires. I want you to write everything down that you can think of. It could be 50 things, could be 10 things, whatever you want. The things that are right on the top of your list that this, if I had this thing, I want it. I want it right now. It would make me happy, whatever it is. Then I want you to sit quietly for 30 minutes and I want you to think about the things that you have that you're grateful for. 
all of the things. If you've never seen It's a Wonderful Life, I recommend you go you go see it. It's an old movie. Um, it's got Jimmy Stewart in it. It's an amazing movie. I love it so much. I watch it every single year at Christmas time. And it really puts my life into perspective. He gets a chance to just like erase his whole life. I never existed. And then he goes back through his town and he's trying to get recognized by these people that were his lifelong friends and nobody knows him because it he wished for never existing. And then he becomes, once he gets the wish that redacted and it comes back and everybody knows him, he moves to a completely grateful space. So if you could do that during this 30 minutes of, of just simply thinking of the things in your life that you're grateful for. I want you then in that 30 minutes to think of all of those things being gone, all of it, anything that in your life, your house, your family, your, your pain, your bills, your debt, your anything, all of it erased. For that 30 minutes, I want you to think about being grateful for the things that you have and think about if all of those things were gone. And then when you're done, see if you can write things on the list or see if you would end up writing the same things on the list. See if you would be happy for the house that you do have or the family that you do have or the bills even or the debt because Jimmy Stewart comes back and he goes, you know, (laughs) thank you, old building and loan, you know, and it's like the bane of his existence, this, you know, building that his father had and his father passed away and he was going to work there for a couple of years and then his younger brother was going to come and take it over and he was going to go and travel. And instead, he ended up staying pretty much for his whole life and he regretted it. But I want you to do this exercise and see what you think. And share in the comments or come to my Lady Rising group on Facebook and share with me and said, hey, you know what? I listened to part one of why we won't allow ourselves to be happy. And here's what I came up with and share your epiphanies. I would love that. I would love to hear that. And if you do come in, if you're not already a member of the Lady Rising group, then uh, and when you do come in, say you're coming in through the podcast because I love I love hearing that and, and reading that from new people coming in. So I hope this finds you well and you go do this activity. And then I look forward to sharing with you how to open the floodgates to happiness, part two. And uh, I'll see you in a couple days. Wow, that may have felt like a lot of information in today's episode, but if you're looking for support and a deeper knowledge of what we talked about today, then let's connect. You can learn more about how I work and how you can work with me. Send me an email to the meditation room TC at gmail.com, subject line, let's talk. And in the meantime, you can join my online Facebook community, Lady Rising, and mention that you came in through the podcast. I look forward to supporting you and connecting with you there.